computer. Okay, here we go. Um, so let me see if the setup of the secondary cluster is still going. Okay, it did again complete, but it again gave me this error, which is strange, but as far as I understand, we can ignore that. Uh, so at the moment we have two clusters. Um, I already set up uh, two uh, VM instances for setting up the Postgres databases. Uh, they are those in the same zones as the the clusters for the Kubernetes. And I think I should be good to go for uh, yeah for starters now. So I've have the issue here where with all the information filled in about what uh, what where the machines are. So I can check these boxes now. Hit record, okay. Uh, so the documentation, that's this one. I am seeing that you missed a critical step in choosing a beverage at the temperature of your choice. Yeah, it, it's behind me, I'll, I'll forget it. Thanks, Jason. Okay. You're more than welcome. <laughs> um, the documentation. So what did we do so far? Uh, so we're using external PostgreSQL. Um, so it's not in the shards. Uh, support of application, stuff like that. I guess it's it just omnibus, so it should be, should be supporting that. Uh, set up omnibus instances, that's what I've done already. Um, I'm not sure if for this I need some extra uh, firewall rules. Uh, maybe we'll we'll need to check that out later on. Other than that, so I've used an operating system and I've installed the Omnibus package on there without an external URL. I've set up two clusters which I've done just yet. Um, both English using HTTPS. I'm not sure what this step additionally is. Effectively, they both need you to be able to reach each other over port 443. When you deploy the charts in uh, GKE, this should not be a problem. Okay, great. That's what we have, so <laughs> let's move on. Um, Access to persistent storage, mini or not required if using external. Yeah, these, I wasn't sure what I be showing, should be doing with. Uh, I did not set some, set up any Gitly or mini or Redis. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe we can offload that also to the omnibus installations or the charge of doing that. I'm not sure where they are supposed to reside. Sure. The, this probably could use slightly rephrased, um, but effectively it's saying these are the things that if you're going to use an external, you need to make sure that your clusters can access. If you're deploying it as a part of the chart, as we're doing in this demo, then again, this is one of those things that's taken care of by the chart and you don't have to be concerned with. Tone, if you're talking, you're, you're muted. muted. Strange, I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, so yeah. So I've, I did collect information I, and I all uh, wrapped it up in the issue, um, what, which was should be linked in the agenda item also. So that's the first part. Then we can um, set off with setting up the primary database on the Omnibus instance. Um, so this is the SSH access to the primary. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And we should be installing this into the GitLab RP. We need to replace several items. External URL. I'm a little bit confused because I 
didn't expect uh, this host uh, required to be publicly accessible, like from the outside. Uh, external URL is something that is actually used uh, throughout many other pieces. It's not strictly about the automated configuration of HTTP access. This won't be accessible through port 80 or port 43, but rather external URL gets populated into things like the geo node name when not specifically defined. Oh yeah, that's true. So what's your more concrete suggestion here? Uh, set it to whatever you expect the external URL to be of your primary Kubernetes cluster. Okay. Um, set it to whatever you want it to be on your primary Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so that's the same name throughout like the whole installation. Yeah, if, you're, if your geo primary is going to be gitlab.tune.place, then you would enter that here. Hmm. Um, so let's use the same, uh, so tcqube primary.go.gitlab.ml. Uh, yeah, we need to add that to the DNS later, but uh, it's fine. You may want that to be HTTPS. Yeah, okay. Wasn't sure. Makes sense. What else did we need to customize? The user password hash. So that's the this one. Uh, Mm -mm -mm. What else? Where is my documentation again? And the PostgreSQL and the five sitter addresses can be updated to be a list explicit IP addresses. Yeah, we don't right. want you to. You currently have it set to 000, which basically means anybody can access it if they appropriately authenticate. Mm hmm. Yeah, so it, it will, will work, but it's not really like safe to do it like this. Right. For the purposes of a demo, it'll function. But in production, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Okay, that's it. So place the content in GitLab RP, reconfigure, set replication password. Let's do the first save. That was fairly quick. <clears throat> so let's set the replication password. Yeah, also for the purpose of the demo, I've just used a very simple password and I have to use the same one for every host, uh, for every database. It's also not really recommended, but it's pretty simple for this demo again. All right. Um, that's retrieve the primary database public certificate. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, whatever.
Okay, so the primary database is good to go. Uh, now we can deploy the primary geo Kubernetes cluster. We'll start from this example configuration. Uh, 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 um. There is also a link to the actual example YAML file if you choose. Just huh. uh, mm, 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 mm. It's in the charts. I have the charts also cloned somewhere. Maybe that's even simpler. Sure. Where is clone it? it or, or do a, a curl to get the raw itself? Oh, to you. Sorry? You can clone it or you can do a curl to get the raw output or you can just copy and paste the parts from the documentation. It's up to you. Yeah, I have it here. Uh, so, domain, go get, is it like the whole domain or just? In this case, it would be the domain part. If you want to specify different host names, you'll have to specify those as separate. This is just the actual domain part. I missed what your host name was supposed to be for the primary. Mm -mm -mm. Where did I put that again? I'm lost. This one. So is it this one or not? Yeah, so what you're going to do is just have the go gitlab.nl or ml there. Over here. And then, yes. And you're actually going to want to sit um, uh, under the host key. First, you're going to want to set gitlab to be that. Um, whatever your actual external URL. Because what this will do by default chart will generate gitlab.gogitlab.ml and minio.gogitlab.ml. So you need to change those hosts for any reason. If you have full control of the domain, this isn't a problem. Yeah, but should I rather use like a pro, uh, something like this? And then, then if stuff you, like Redis would would be created, or is it? Yes. So you're you're correct there. So you wouldn't get Redis.primary, but you would get GitLab.primary.GoGitLab.ml. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just so just like just want, want, want to make sure that the thing in front of. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to make sure that my primary and my secondary aren't using the same host names. Or the same domain, sorry. Which is good. It's good like this. Yes, yeah, sorry, Jason, your sometimes your sound isn't great. Not sure if it's on my side, but your your sound like I'm a robot. gonna bet it's me and airport air <laughs> it's airport sound, sorry. Okay. Uh for the PostgreSQL host, can I uh should I be using an IP address here? Or should I be setting up this as, or should I be setting up DNS records? Uh, if you want to use a host name, then a DNS record would be required. You can use an IP address directly. Either one will work as long as the TCP stack knows how to do that. If you yeah, have the same. IP on hand and don't set up DNS, you don't have to use the IP. Sorry, I didn't get that. If you don't want to wait for setting up the DNS, go ahead and use the IP. Yeah, I was uh, planning to use IP. It seems like simpler and and it can be the, an internal address for JKA. I would assume so.
uh, passwords. No, I'm not sure what secret chill. It's all secret before boy. This is my connector. Sorry, uh, Jason, I cannot uh, understand you. The creation of that secret is documented. That's the, well, yes. Um, okay, maybe I just have a look back to the docs. We need to create a secret containing the database password for a short consume. Replace password below with the password. Uh huh. Thanks. Mm -mm -mm. This one. No, not this one. This is not what I expected, but sure. <clears throat> Aha, uh -huh. okay, that's from Little Rule, yes. So I need to re uh, revert this and I probably, no, this one, where, where did I run this? Secret Geo created. I wonder where it was created exactly. Okay. Mm, what else do we need? We'll need to create a secret, update the configuration, correct values for a global host's domain, PSQL host, right? Also, conf configure any additional settings, SSL, TLS, external Redis, external object storage. We don't use that, so that's fine. Deploy the chart using this configuration. That's in the examples geo primary. Let's try this. Yay. <laughs> Okay. Um, people update. Hang tight while we grab the latest from the shorts. Yeah, that we need to add the GitLab repo. That's why it's not coming up. Oh, did I miss something in preparation then? That might be related really to the error we were seeing earlier. I thought the Bootstrap script did that. Okay. Step. I know the bootstrap script deploys um, the cluster and everything, but it has nothing to do with Helm at this time. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, since um, my audio is so choppy, <laughs> adding the repository. I'm going to assume you asked me to help and add the repository because your audio is so great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, if you do a Helm repo, Helm repo add, and then let's see. Sorry, I'm blanking because it is still early in the morning. Helm Did you get your beverage at the... Uh... What was it? I do of? have I have my, my hot beverage of choice, but I just haven't drank enough of it yet. So how many people add GitLab? Well oh, actually if you this is right from the top of the fold of our chart stocks, which is handy. Uh, 
So I just um, posted a link in Zoom chat to our chart stocks. And okay. The, you can see the commands under GitLab version mappings are exactly, the, the first command is exactly what you need to do to add the, the repo to our. Mm -hmm. right. Was there anything else search? Uh, the search is just to verify whether it worked, I guess. Yeah. So now the upgrade should work. Oh, he's missing the uh, adding an email address for the cert uh, yeah. manager because we have it set up for HTTPS. Yeah, so this is due to the built-in Let's Encrypt integration. You need to give it an email address for that. Um, so that should be added to the docs, but you can do it on the command line as well. So if you add to your upgrade command, if you do a dash dash set, cert manager dash issuer dot email. Oh, this one. And then give it an email address. Like that? Yep. Much better. This looks cool. Status deployed. Resources. All right. Have you set up the DNS? Have you set up the DNS? I'm not sure what uh, what you mean by that. I, I yeah, I, I probably need to set up something in DNS. I'm, I'm aware of that, and I saw somewhere I needed to give Kubernetes uh, DNS access, but uh, I missed where I should have been doing that. Uh, so the charts. Deployment guide. Mm -hmm. Is it generating that for me, or should I should I have told it somehow to create these DNS records for me? Yeah, it automatically handles it for you if you use a static IP. Otherwise, I believe it. 
as soon as you're going to manage that. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm not sure what I should be doing here now. So I think we need to create some DNS records for this in this case. So should I be creating for this IP address a DNS records or? Uh, no, if you do a, a command line, if you go to a cube control get ing or get svc, sorry. Sorry, get? Get svc. Enter. No external IP address. You should have services from the, there should be other services there. That's not what I expect to see at all. Uh, I guess, can, can you do a get pods? Are we on the right Kubernetes configuration? I, mean, I, I guess. So you, you're doing two Kubernetes clusters right now, right? I've, I've created two, yes. So the, we might be on your second cluster at the moment. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, that's what I'm missing. Like how does how does this cube control command work? All right, so we can go through the the Google console if that's easier at this point in time rather than walking through how to manage the Kubernetes configurations because that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so services and ingress, sorry. So I'm better at the kube control, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit, but uh, you'll see in the left hand side. Oh, yeah, sorry. That one. Yeah. And then you can, if in the filter thing, you can do a cluster colon, then the name of your primary cluster, and that'll reduce it. So, uh, what? Uh, cluster. Ah, oh, like this, okay. I oh. have done something wrong, I guess. <laughs> you might have deployed to your secondary cluster because when you when you use the the bootstrap script, it sets up your cube control config automatically to use that cluster. So we might have ended yeah. up deploying your primary to your secondary cluster. I was afraid something like that was <laughs> happening because I saw them secondary here, but not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. now surprised that also this doesn't return anything. So that maybe that's still on your primary configuration for, for cube control. So it's all right, it's just a name. It's, you know, calling it secondary doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the secondary. So we can work with this. But isn't uh, it you, like, if, if you would like deploy it in regions, wouldn't that be the wrong region or? Yeah, we'd wanna be more careful with this. So this, this might be something we wanna maybe call out in the docs that deploying the clusters might mess with your Kubernetes configuration, so to, to make sure, so we might want to put in some notes to make sure you're on the right cluster before you run commands, but for purposes of today, we don't need to remove this and redeploy yeah, okay. to a different right. cluster. Yeah. Although I'm not sure. Uh, so we wanted to set an external IP address or a DNS record. Uh, and right, so if we go back to the cloud console, we need to find the external IP address, it should have dynamically assigned your external IP address. So we need to look at the services for the cluster and we're looking for a type of load balancer. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, yeah. now select the secondary. 
go ahead. So these are all in secondary registry, that is. And there's the load balancer right there. So um, there's your IP address for the GitLab Geo Nginx Ingress controller. So you see the third column is this, type yeah. load balancer. Oh, load balancer, yeah. So, and there's the IP address that we need to create DNS records for. This one and... Uh, and we'll want to do a wildcard. So that's primary then. Uh, can I do a wildcard like this? I'm not sure. I think you can. Yes. Cool. Uh, yeah. What's was that the name I I did select? Yeah, I did. Okay, it's not very clean for the resident environment, but for a demo <laughs> now it works. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we can continue with the documentation, I guess. Yeah. And we will probably want to rerun the Helm command with domain set to the primary dot. I don't think we have domain set in the example settings. Mm. This one. Okay, yep, it does. Never mind. So we should be all right. Where was I? Uh, GitLab Geo, this was it, okay. Uh, so I deployed this one. I did run this command, wait for the deployment to complete. Log into GitLab and upload your GitLab license file. So I should now be able to, yeah, if my DNS records come through, yeah, and since they're new, they should be fine. It would I should be able to access this URL. Yep. Of course I can. Name cannot be resolved. Yeah, <laughs> probably not a good idea, but huh. something is listening. That's okay. Primary.gitlab. That is resolving for me from home. So you're, you're, you're able to access GitLab on that? Yeah, if I did a dig on gitlab.primary.gogitlab.ml, I get the, the IP address we expect. <laughs> Not from my end. <laughs> okay. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wild card is working. Yeah. Well, the the the, the TTL is set to five minutes, so it won't shouldn't be take longer than that. But mm -mm -mm. yeah, Firefox probably also won't be able to get it now. It's always DNS. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah.
you can. Always. Still wondering what I did wrong here, or what I should be doing for the, the secondaries. DNS. This comes down to ensuring that you change the coop control contact. <clears throat> yeah. So the. Uh, the bootstrap script did uh, did set that context for me. Yeah, so when the standard display the secondary, we want to make sure we update the context to switch. Okay. Which is just a kube control config set context and then TCGOQ primaries. We'll want to install the secondary too. <clears throat> yeah. I'll put that in chat because that might be easier. Come on. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Refreshing 10 times doesn't make it go faster or does it? <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> Log into GitLab and upload your license. Let me quickly browse to what next commands should be. Get parts. No, we have made this simpler. It's merged earlier today. So 12.6, possibly the next Progress. patch for 12.5. So you're like saying resolving now. Said? Yeah, it's, res it's resolving, but it's not uh, healthy. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a step forward. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer DNS. Yep. Um, Can you have him check the migrations? No, that's a good call. Um, so yeah, if we go back to the Google Cloud Console, and if we go to workloads. Workloads, okay. Migrations pods are pending. I see that. I don't know what it's so. about. That probably means we're having problems talking to the database. Uh, if you click on that. Um, I'm wondering why these are called geo, because just, it doesn't, doesn't uh, it's not related to it's thinking it's on, on a secondary, right? Or is it? Right, so when we did the Helm upgrade command, we gave the release a name of GitLab geo. Mm -hmm. And so that's every pod and deployment it's gonna create is that means it'll be deployed with GitLab Geo as a prefix to the name for everything. Oh yeah, it's the, where is it? Yeah, and, uh, that one you mean, okay. Yep, exactly. So, the, so you can name that Tune Super Geo Cluster and then every pod will be Tune Super Geo Cluster dash Postgres and Etc. Mm -hmm. Etc. So uh, that's that's how. If you click on the pod name, that'll give us more detail. Uh, this one. 
and by workloads, Google Cloud means pods for the most part. Pod, pods are pending. Pod initializing. That's probably a problem. So we're going to want to check the container logs. clock is very ominous. <laughs> Coop control logs might be faster. Yeah, if you want to switch back to your, switch your context. Like this? You'll need to switch your Coop control con context first. I put some, some details in chat, but you run a config get contexts. Foo? What is the foo? Foo is just an example. Just oh, okay, it's a set. Whatever, yeah. whatever context you want to set it to, but to get the name of the context, if you run the get contexts command. Oh, it's nice. Someone, I'm not sure what, but it did capitalize the K. Yeah, that's Zoom. That's not me, I swear. <laughs> yeah, I, I assumed so. <laughs> Um, so we need um, like this, or is it? Yeah. So yeah, we should that make sure that's set. I mean, it says it is, but we weren't getting correct output. So yeah, hit enter oh, yeah, right. just to be sure. Our set context is singular. All right so, now, and then the. Lot the pod name. So if you do a, or if you do a minus L app equals migrations. Sorry, app? App app equals migrations. All right, let's go back to the pod name. Cause, so if you just do control logs, then GitLab Geo dash migrations, then you should be able to tab complete. Oh, uh, sorry. If you set up your... No, I didn't. Okay, so Q control get pods. That's one word? Two words, sorry. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, all right, so Q control minus N GitLab get pods. Uh huh. There we go. And now, so the and we'll need to give it dash and GitLab again. There are ways to make that default. All right. Uh, let's see. So we have init containers on this. So we can, if you do a dash C, we can patch the different container names to look at the logs for them. Um, we go back to the console window. Okay. So to get the container names, because I forget which containers we have with this. Uh, if you go back. Scroll down in a container. So configure, I'm guessing, is the one we want. So go back to the console now, or the terminal. Sorry. Yes. And then if you do dash, so the dash c configure, and then the pod name. 
Uh, so again, this one. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, what Jason just posted in chat will be useful. Probably. Yeah, and then dash it and get that. Well, uh, if you get, instead of migrations pods, if you give it the pod name. Uh, so again, on this. Yeah. Uh, there we go. I'm happy it makes sense to you because it does <laughs> for me. <laughs> so the, the last line there. Uh, Failed mount. Secrets geo not found. Uh -huh. Probably ended up wrong namespace or yeah. wrong cluster. Yes. So if you do a cube control get secrets. Uh, get secrets. Yes, oh, and there. No, probably like. Ah, uh, yeah. That's what's wrong, I guess. So I wonder if you can. I think you can change the, the namespace. So if you do a Q control edit secret geo. Edit secret geo. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. And then change the namespace to GitLab. All right, maybe you can't do that. Oh, does a dash? Yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah, so we just we just need to create it, recreate it in the correct namespace. Um, how did I do that again? I think you did it with the cube control create secret. So I don't know if your history goes back. Create secrets. Yeah, we add there an M minus N, exactly. Okay. All right, so now the, the pod should self recover. Ah, oh, it should self-recover. Yeah, so it should try again and see that the secret exists. So if you do the describe pod again, command again, we're probably hitting a back off threshold right now, so it might take a little bit to, to make it move forward. You can always delete the pod and then the deployment will recreate it, or the job should recreate it, I think. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, but I'm not sure how. <laughs> <laughs> Found the bugs in the docs. Well, somebody is happy. <laughs> so I'm actually one minute late for a call with Steven who's also in the call already so well yeah uh, whatever if you if, yeah, if, we can reschedule yeah. um, uh, Ian that's fine okay <laughs> thanks both and we're already rescheduling mine too so yeah. it'll be okay. yeah, no worries guys this is uh, this is super interesting so appreciate it <laughs> So, uh, shall I remove it or just to shall we wait? Uh, just check again now. It could have recovered while we were waiting. I don't want to delete it if it's already running. Yeah, I think we can delete this then. So instead of describe pod, if you delete pod. This is interesting. So how this works is when the pod is removed, the Kubernetes job will recognize the pod was removed and recreated because it hasn't been completed yet. Okay, yeah. So in the, how did we do that? List, 
So, pods, pods, pods. Do a get pods there, it'll list the available pods. So it has an, another random here uh, and it's well, running. Now it's now. running. Yeah. Now if we do a, a logs on that, a kube control minus n GitLab logs. If you do dash F, and you don't want to configure this time. Oh, yeah. Wanna... <laughs> Sorry. No problem. And if you add dash F as well, it'll act like tail. Ah. So yeah, this is this is these are the logs from the configuration phase, right? Yep. And these exactly. are more operational. Interesting. Phase is maybe not the right word, but <laughs> yeah. this is actually a great demo because it's showing us the, the level of familiarity that we have that other people don't and is exposing the knowledge that's not necessarily available for everybody on how to do some of these tasks. Yeah, yeah, that, that was my purpose for the demo also, like do an unbiased uh, demo. So I didn't want to do too much preparation for this uh, and just try what, see what happens. I'm not sure if this is supposed to take so long. Maybe head to your database server, we can tell the logs there and see if it's getting any errors. Where is my database server? This one. Oh. Hmm. Mm, that looks good. Well, there's not much happening. <laughs> not much means there's no errors, at least. <laughs> okay, you, you would have suspected someone was. Uh, rejecting connections here or something like that. Yeah. Huh, okay. Rails, it's super speedy to start. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, yeah, it's a pain. <laughs> We're working to try and get Bootsnap patched so that we can actually recompile the Bootsnap cache and cut boot time by about 30%. Oh, well, that will be interesting. I, I know we had an effort for Bootstrap in the past, but I'm not sure what ranked wrong there. Um, it actually works perfectly fine on Omnibus. Uh, the problem is in the uh, containerized ecosystem and the way Bootsnap actually checks what version of uh, ABI it's running against. So we're working to patch that to be correct so that we can actually pre-build the cache and distribute it so that it's not locked to a very specific kernel version and compile time. That's uh, an interesting exercise. <laughs> Jeez. I know, right? So do you have a firewall on your database servers? The only thing I'm thinking of is if you do, we might not have, did we open up access because we switched clusters? Um, mm -mm -mm. That would be my concern if we configured the internal IP address and it can't see the internal IP address across the zones. Yeah. It's very possible. It was my purpose to stay in the same zone, but that went wrong at some point. But something should have happened here now, independent of, of connection errors, I, I assume.
is there a way to to test the connection from like a database to yeah that's not that's not correct i guess we can do it through the task runner so if you do the, if you go back to the your terminal uh, do the, so you'll see the pod name is the gitlab geo task runner this one yep so uh, it's not actually not gonna be running is it or it should be can you do a get pods just to see this current state well, that's annoying Um, if you kill that pod, it should restart. It was probably, well, if it's in the middle of a knit, I would do a describe on that pod, see if it's coming up. Uh, okay, so yeah, if you kill, if you delete the pod, then it should, it should launch. Oh, Ian, I think this is what you saw. Could be, yeah. That it's just waiting, it's never retrying. No. GitLab Geo Geo PostgreSQL password. I think this is the bug you saw when when going through MR ten fifty five. I was looking at the previous MR line where it's in Secrets Geo not found, Secrets Geo have. So, yeah. Yeah, it's saying the key is not found inside of the secret. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, this is, could definitely so, yeah, be what I was saying. Yeah, this is, this is a bug in 2.5 with the inclusion of Geo. The task runner is trying to have both passwords on the primary, on the primary, it never needs the secondary's database password. And this is a, this is a bug that we inadvertently introduced. This is solved with 1055 merge. <sighs> In the meantime, we can just edit the secret and add that key and we should be fine. <laughs> or I think this one actually wants a separate secret, but it doesn't matter what content you put in it. Yeah, it works fine for me to just add the add it to the existing secret because it's looking for the geo secret with that key. So if you do the cube control edit or cube control minus n GitLab edit secret geo. Well, actually, it may not depending on what his Helm configuration is. If he didn't set geo psql password secret, it would look for the templated name, which is that one present here. Right. If you do the cube control edit secret geo tune. Sorry? If you do a cube control minus n GitLab edit secret geo. Yeah. Yep, that should be good. Uh, yeah. And then um, if you create under the data key, we need to create a Yeah, and then if you get right the second there. one, the, the name, whatever name, the, the GitLab Geo, Geo Postgres password. That one? It needs, a, it needs the full GitLab Geo as well. That's what it's oh. looking for. Yeah, it can be the same. Yeah, it can be the same. Yeah. It can even be completely bogus. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We may have to create a secret by that name. Yeah. It should, it's looking for it in the geo secret. So, Shall I delete it to apply that or? Sure.
what can go wrong? If we're doing it right, it should always be safe to delete pods. You might get some downtime while the service is restarting pods, but it shouldn't like destroy anything. Uh, get pods. Oh, that looks better. No. GitLab GeoGeo. Now it's looking for the full secret. <laughs> All right. So if we do a, just create an empty secret with that name. Uh, with this full name. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. And then again, the lead or? Uh, we might be soon enough that it's going to retry quickly. So do the describe. Uh -huh. There we go. OK, what were we doing again? So now we can actually do what we're doing. <laughs> so uh, now we can do, actually uh, debug. If you want to do a bring up that command that we just ran, we're going to edit it a little bit. If you do a change the describe pod to uh, exec dash it. It. Yep, and then at the end of the line, do a dash dash bash. Dash dash space bash. And cool. now this is a running shell on a pod in the in the cluster so that we can then use to try and debug our database connectivity. It should even have PSQL, so we can use that. Interesting. Um, I don't remember if we put a wrapper in for GitLab dash PSQL. We did not. But you can do a, we do have a GitLab Rails in here, I think. So you can yes, we do. GitLab dash Rails console and see if that does anything. And then we wait another hour. <laughs> if we get bored, we can always just do some manual commands with PSQL. PSQL. It's stuck. So I open another one, but then I need uh, to. Sorry. Does Control Z work? And then kill percent one. Kill percent mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. oh, I've never done it like that. Uh, hit enter again. Huh. There we go. That's PSQL. Cool. When, yep. Um, yeah, and then I need to host and stuff like that. Yep. So the host has this one. Mm -mm -mm. Port. What else? Uh, capital U and username. Uh, that's GitLab, I think, right? Yep. And then it should prompt you for the password. It does? It Maybe should, I need... if it can connect. Yeah. But if it's not connecting, that means that looks like, yeah, there's... Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> there's no route. So either a firewall or just no internal route between network zones. Is it like this? Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it should be failing. PSQL should fail a lot sooner. Uh -huh. 
can actually connect to the, the database. So this tells me it's not able to connect. Will that work? No, oh, I can't. I would, I would assume <laughs> so. Uh, the cheater method is try and uh, curl it. Curl? Or open SSL S client connect. Open SSL S client. Like that? So, yeah. S underscore client, I think, right, Jason? So what I am seeing is you're using the internal, the private IP address. And so that might be on different networks. We might have to try switching to connect to the external IP address. So that was in the console window there. Yeah, so this is IP I filled in here. Right, that's the private IP address. That might not be accessible from the cluster, but the external IP address should be accessible. Ah, that, uh, that's this one. So if we go back to the task runner pod, we can verify before we update the configuration to use that. Oh, so, oh. Oh, sorry. We may need to open firewall here. Yeah, looks like. So you should be able to do that through the console. I should. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's in the. I think if you just go to the instance itself. It doesn't give you a. Yeah, yeah I'll, I should add in firewall rule. Yeah. Uh, I've done that. Or add a tag and then some network tag. What is it? Uh, where is it? Firewall. Geosync firewall. Oh. Wait. Oh, torn. Firewall rules. I've done this before, but I can't remember exactly. Not, yeah, there are like. I think we can just create a temporary one and delete it when we're done.
But how do you connect her will to? I would just. I'm slightly paranoid, so I would recommend not opening everything. I would recommend just specifying the Postgres stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, where is my cube now? Just go. Huh. Uh, so specified ports, that's TCP, right? Yeah, and then just 5432. Also this one? That's only on the secondary. But it will, I mean, it's, we can, we can add it now, and then we only need one firewall rule for both hosts. Okay. And then if we go back to the... VM instance, we should be able to apply this tag, I think. Yeah, I was, I was wondering how I, maybe I should have done, should have set a source tag here. Ah. Um, mm, mm. Applicable. Compute engine, it's where is it? it's called TC cube. Why isn't there a TC? Oh, I'm, I'm on GitLab internal here for some reason. How did that happen? Okay. Oh, this cloud console is also being slow today. <laughs> okay. Uh, Where are you located? I'm sorry. Sorry, what were you saying? I was just curious where you're located. I'm from Belgium. Belgium. Nice. Are these automatically created? Or these are these for yeah, of course. They're for the Yeah, they're for the different clusters. Um okay, let's go ahead again. DC cube DB uh, locks off network. Yeah. Which network are these on network default? Allow specific targets IP range. Uh, cube database. Oh, specific ports. So these are the source tags now, I think that. Okay, and now we can cube, can we? Maybe refresh. Yeah, I have to drop up an oven a little bit because I have to pick up the kids. I'm uh, pretty sure we won't make it to the end of the demo <laughs> in a short notice anyway. Well, it's good to, the know that, connecting. good to know the demo is not having a problem because of the actual function. More <laughs> than the environment is a pain to set up. Sorry, Steven, you were saying? Oh, that was Jason. Oh, yeah, I saw you both talking, I, I thought, but. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, these kinds of demos are 
super valuable, right? Because it helps us understand where the rough spots and the sharp edges are before our mm -hmm. users. <laughs> yeah, initially there were a lot of uh, people more in like customer ending and sales and stuff like that who wanted to join this demo. I was like, well, let's not do this for this demo because I'm not sure it will be very smooth. <laughs> yeah, understood. Uh, did this work now? I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure what I'm doing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a confusing part for me. Uh, so I have a uh, group geo, I have why type ingress? What does it mean? Okay, DC, what is it again? Uh, DC cube demo. It's applicable to instances. Yeah, then I'm back at the, at the machine. Tags, cube DB, and I also have set it here. I think that that's the thing to do normally. Or I can... Uh, service, no. That's what I... Target all instances on the network source filter. I just started responding for me on that port. This one. Uh huh. Hey. Yeah. All right. So now we have a database connection. We have a database connection, right. <laughs> so now the migrations need to run. So we can go. So I can the log. exit the task runner? I think so, yeah. And we can do the logs again for the migration pod. Uh, is it another one? Oh yeah, the Z. Eight twenty-eight minutes ago. So we should start if we do logs on this, we should see it running the actual All right, dash F was to follow. Alright, this this so it's retrying. Uh seeing database has not been initialized yet, so that means, oh, we need to upgrade uh, the update. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's working with internal IPs now. That's that you were wanted to say that, I guess. I was saying something different. I didn't expect it to work with internal IPs, but I'm happy that it is. Yeah. I thought we needed to update to connect to the external IP, but nope, we're good. Yeah, we set, set the firewall wall pretty wide so <laughs> yeah but I thought they kept their their internal IPs like completely isolated like if you even wanted to talk between networks you had to use the external IP but either I'm wrong or we, we put the cluster on the same network as the instances
custom okay what is this saying that was a little bit too ambitious i guess <laughs> well we can do a cube control get pods So we're still, if you see the unicorn pods only have one of two running. So we're still waiting for those to finish starting up. If you do a, if you do the cube control get pods again, but add a dash W, that'll uh -huh. update, that updates in real time as the states change. And it looks mm -hmm. like we have, we do have two of two unicorns now. So, if you want to try relook pressing again, we might be able to. Hooray! Yeah, I've seen this password somewhere. Fly, fly. Yeah. Uh, so now, if you do the, oh, yep, it's right there. Please remember me. Well, this is pretty cool already. <laughs> <laughs> At least from my point of view. Now I can finally add the license. Yep. That was just a little minor step in, in, <laughs> in the document. <laughs> no, not this one. Uh, upload. All right. Um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna stop here because I really need to leave. That's fine with me. Um, yeah, Kids this important. piece was outdated or did I mis misunderstand that from Jason? Which piece? Yeah, he, he was saying something that th the next part was, was changed recently. Uh, maybe, uh, we did just add, so the, now the, where I'm not sure it has actually merged yet, but it hasn't been released for sure that running the geo migrations on the secondary once that's deployed. So in here, it should be a manual step on the, the Omnibus server and that's no longer required. Uh-huh. Yeah. But other than that, everything should be the same. You just shouldn't need to run the migrations on the secondary. I can ask Jason to, to follow up as well. Yeah, and if you just want to ping in Slack if you're working on it later on, I'll be around all day too. Yeah, I'll, I really appreciate uh, for being here, helping me out. I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't sure what, <laughs> what was going on, so I really... Uh, uh, no problem, it's a good spot to, for us to see what the pain points are too, so... Yeah, um, I'll, I'm not sure what next steps are from here. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll upload a recording. It might be interesting to anyone who wants to see it. Um, maybe I'll try to, or or will you extract notes from what was wrong, or or how will we do that? Uh, I guess maybe do we both want to do it because we both have different viewpoints as to. Okay. Yeah. 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 That that's that's a great point. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Start a doc, and then people can just throw feedback in there. Oh yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I agree. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we're only three left now, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yep, this okay. was thanks, very, Really very appreciate, uh, yeah, folks sitting down and, you know, we're breaking new ground. And so uh, folks, you know, getting together and, and making it happen is hard to get lab way, right? It was uh, exciting for me as well. So thanks. Yep, this was very useful. Thank you, Tune. See you around. Later, guys.